We're in a very exciting time right now. We have learned a tremendous amount about the universe over the last few hundred years since the very earliest telescopes. But we've looked as far back in time as is possible to see with electromagnetic waves. The universe beyond that becomes like looking into a fog. You can get close within seconds or so of the Big Bang if you could do it with neutrinos, and you could get back to the Big Bang itself if you could do it with gravitational waves. But we're not yet able to do that. 95% of the universe is made of dark matter and dark energy, but we don't know what they are. We don't know the origin of supermassive black holes when the universe was very young. We also don't know why the universe favors matter over antimatter. We need investment on new technology development and also in training a next generation of scientists to build the instruments to explore those questions. What has limited our ability to move science forward through my career, including building the detector for gravitational waves, and it's how to involve the development of instrumentation. To do that inside of a university is ideal. Center for Experimental Cosmology and Instrumentation at the UCR is dedicated to build the next generation of technologies that can help unveil the deepest mysteries of the universe by bringing together physicists, astronomers, material scientists. I don't know of any other initiative quite like this one. We've hired so far three young people and they've come here to be university professors and have immediately synergized together. So looking at the light actually coming out mm -hmm. and trying to see how coherent that light is. The adaptive optic I'm building is intentionally incoherent. Right. My research focus is in the detection of gravitational waves. Although LIGO has the most pristine optics that are possible to produce, the reflective coatings of these optics absorb a small amount of the incident laser power. My experimental program here at UC Riverside is aimed at developing new forms of adaptive optics aimed at controlling these thermal distortions that would otherwise be introduced as we push LIGO's laser power towards these extreme megawatt scales. My main field of research is in dark matter detection. Uh, at the same hand, I'm also working on neutrino experiments. We're currently building the dark side 20K detector in Gran Sasso National Lab in central Italy. And right now, we're in charge of one of the major subsystems of the detector, working on designing and answering some of the technical questions uh, to make sure that it's ready to be constructed and, and operate up to spec. My particular area of focus is in measuring the cosmic microwave background, developing what we call superconducting detectors that are highly scalable so that we can get to these large numbers that we need to answer these uh, again, big questions in cosmology. I'm quite excited about the prospects with the Simons Observatory in the Atacama Desert that's fielding tens of thousands of detectors, primarily measuring the CMB. We want to be able to use multiple detectors yeah. and look for correlated signal. We assume that it's going to be some kind of spherical wave, right? We'll learn the most in the future from detecting these most extreme astrophysical events with not just gravitational waves, but one or more other types of information carrier from the distant universe. One candidate for this would be neutrinos, which my colleague Sean Westerdale works on. So there is a lot of synergy between his group and mine. Another line of synergy is Steve Choi. The two of us have recently started talking with a few of the faculty uh, who study the physics of materials to figure out ways that we can combine the technology that we're all developing to measure very low energy signals uh, using quantum effects that might come from neutrino or dark matter signals. This is creating synergies between physics and astronomy, but interestingly, even though we're instrumentally oriented, but also between the theorists and the experimentalists. I'm a theorist. As a theorist, we can help identify pressing scientific questions. We're also eager to learn uh, how detector works, how instrument works, to refine our models. Training students, to me, is one of the absolutely fundamental missions of uh, 
a scientist in a university and teaching in a university. We have laboratories here that we're developing that are involving not just graduate students, but undergraduate students, postdocs on the campus itself. They're here being exposed to forefront technical experimental laboratories. The work that's being done at the center is directly contributing to economic growth and development. It's engaging with existing industry to get them onto the, sort of the cutting edge of developing these new technologies and instruments. This center, as it grows, will also spin off some industries and businesses that will locate right here in the Inland Empire so that we have greater job opportunities for the people who live here. The future of experimental cosmology, um, I think, lies in expanding the scope and the sensitivity of our instruments. For example, projects like Cosmic Explorer will revolutionize gravitational wave astronomy. Cosmic Explorer will have a design that's similar to LIGO, but a factor of 10 larger. We are designing this very forward-looking detector for the 2030s that will actually directly incorporate this technology being built today into its baseline design. Let's say we detect the dark matter. I'm sure we're likely to uncover new cosmic phenomena that we have not thought about. Working in, at the intersection of the fundamental science and the technology will ensure there's always a new horizon to problem. One of the most positive orientations that we have in making a center like this is the ability to bring different ideas, different disciplines, different orientations together to solve very complicated problems. And it's a, a model of how to make the world move forward.